Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Woken. I'm back with another fake Grand Order video. Today, I'm going to talk about the Serve Up Rankum quest and all the dudes that are going to be featured on summons for it. So that's going to be today's video. I hope you like it. So let's go right into it. If you don't know, this is the Servant Rank Up Quest Part 13, and this is something that, it's funny because they're actually doing it in reverse order. Basically, seven servants are getting right, uh, uh, rank up quests, and though of those seven, six of them are going to be featured on banners. <clears throat> and this is what the order, and they're going to be released, I think, every two days or so. So the first two set of them are Moriarty and um, Lancer Alter over here. And then on day two, that's going to be Quetz, and that's going to be Yan. And then on day, th on not on day three, but on the final day of it, it will be uh, Vlad, <laughs> it will be Rama, and it will be uh, Kojiro over here. Um, and that's funny because that's actually the opposite way they did it in Japan. Because I had to actually look up in the Japanese version because I realized this banner that they're releasing to go inside along with it, it originally didn't have. Moriarty and Lancer as the front. It was just Vlad by himself. <laughs> so I think they've completely redone how they do the the summon banner for it, at least, it looks like. <clears throat> so yeah, this is going to be the setup for it. So the Servant Rank Up Quest Parthena is here, is here for a limited time. Uh, six of the Servants with Rank Up Quests added in Servant Rank Up Quest Part 13 will be available for pickups in the three pickup summons. The pickup summons will start at two-day intervals during the summon period, starting with this one. And the pickup servants for each period will be announced when the rank up quests are unlocked. So here are the first two here with Moriarty and Lancer. And yeah, and everything else basically follows from then on. And if you're wondering why no where's the Kojiro banner, he's in the friend banner. So just spend some FP on him and try getting him that way. <clears throat> so yeah, let's look at the actual units themselves. Because we can do that over here. So Oh, yeah, I forgot that these aren't translated yet. We may as well just look at the unit and then look at the buff that they're getting here. So we'll start with actually finding that. We'll go in reverse order because this is the way, again, it happened in JP. So we'll go the opposite order here. Go to Moriarty. All right, so for his buff right here, I believe it was a buff to... Yes, this one right here, which is Der Fritsch EX, which ignores invincibility for one turn. This is the current effect of it. For one turn, increases on critical star absorption for one turn. And then it turns into this one, which it turns from an EX into an EX. And what it does now is it ignores invincibility, ignores defense for one turn, increases on crit star absorption for one turn, and then gains crit stars. And you get 20 crit stars from that, which is pretty nice, and the absorption rate is up by 600%. The ability to ignore defense is also kind of nice. So it's very just like... It's funny that it has ignore invincibility and ignores defense, but there's, I guess, two different things. <laughs> there's two different things. You can ignore invincibility, but if they have high-ass defense, it's not really going to help. <clears throat> I think it's an, a nice buff. He is a buster dude, so he is someone who is just literally... All he's doing is focusing in on dealing as much damage to a single enemy. As you can see here, probably you could use... I'd be interesting to know from people who use him a little bit more, because I don't have Moriarty, um, if he needs some kind of buff to his NP. I've heard that, depending on... So I remember when I asked about um, Emmy at Alter, there were people saying, like, well, no, he doesn't need a buff there, because he actually does a lot of damage and stuff like that. So I'm kind of interested to see if he needs an, any kind of buff to an NP. Just because it's been a very long time since I've seen an NP who just literally, his effect is, it just deals damage. And then it just reduces defense. <laughs> I feel like they get, they're a little bit more complicated nowadays. But anyway, that's the buff for Moriarty. Mm, next. Story locked. And this is a buff to her Buster one. So let's go here. This is what it was previously. It was Mana Burst A+, which is increases own, art, uh, own Buster performance for one turn. And then we have Breath of the Red Dragon EX, which increases own buster performance for three times three turns, and then charges own NP gauge by 20%. And the buster up is a 55% at turn three. That's pretty good. It's only three times, but realistically, let's say, because she is a... Oh, but she, can someone that actually loops? It's a good question. I think she probably... Mm, it might be a little bit you probably would need like Oberon and stuff like that but you could in theory find a way to loop with her if you did it with a 
maybe a kaleidoscope turn one and then turn two use the witches and do a, there's ways to okay i'm gonna say there's ways to now that i'm thinking it out there's definitely ways to loop with her with using vision maybe you don't always need oberon and maybe you actually plug suit in another one to give her the last bit of it um but in theory <laughs> she is an aoe unit and the, the vast majority of the time you're going to be using her aoe unit one time and then that's it's kind of done it's very rare that you're ever going to do a buster chain she only has two buster cards to go with that too um i think it ends up being perfectly fine 55 percent is perfectly fine they're usually very wary on giving units they're good they're good on giving units to support to support units they'll gladly give you a give 50 percent up to buster quick or arts and give it to anyone but if you are an attack person yourself they're very hesitant to give it to you for more than like a single turn I think a good example of that one is Skahatch or Skahawk, who has it for exactly one turn for 50% quick up, and they don't really want her to have it for three turns, a three turn buff on that one, just because she is a single target and she, that's not her focus. At least that's what I assume is the reason. Let me see if they ever buffed. I'm pretty sure last I used her, because she is a uh, Bond 10 for me. So it's been a bit since I used her, so I could be wrong on this one lasting only one. Yeah, it still only lasts one turn. So the fact that you get three hits out of it, it's at 55% attack, and for the most part, I think you would probably ever be using her for um, trying to loop, or at the very least, just like shooting off your NP and calling it a day. I think it ends up working perfectly fine. Uh, and next, let's go over to Yang. Yang over here. Let's see, Yan was buffed in Noble Phantasm. So his Noble Phantasm went from a rank A, which was 11 hits quick, deals damage to one enemy, then reduces their crit damage for 3 turns, to deals damage to one enemy, reduces their quick resistance by 20% for 3 turns, increases his own crit damage by 50% for 3 turns, and then reduces their crit damage for 3 turns. That's unchanged. There's obviously a bonus damage to um, damage up, which is nice. Um... This is a pretty solid buff. <clears throat> I think I remember when Yang first came out, he had kind of an issue where he just wasn't very good in general. But I think they've at this point, they've buffed everything but this third skill to where he's actually pretty usable and at least fun. I'm not saying he's not like on comma levels where he's probably going to be soloing most things, but he's definitely usable and actually able to function and probably much better. Like, you can't... This is borderline unusable, but they've really done a lot to make him better and maybe try and wash the stink off of him just being like unusable and bad. So I think this just helps make him more usable, which is always nice. You don't always need a buff that makes you the strongest unit in the game. Typically, you just need a buff that makes you actually usable in the game. <laughs> that's what a lot of units actually need. So I think that's a pretty good buff for Yan. Let's go over to my qu girl Quetz over here, who gets a bonus, uh, a strengthening to her charisma. Charisma A plus increases party attack for three turns. Pretty bad. Twenty one percent for three. Twenty one percent attack isn't bad, but considering that she's an SSR, come on, they could give her more, and they barely give her more. <laughs> the attack up is twenty one percent, and then it's a star bomb for twenty five, which is actually really nice. Um. Because you can just supply her with your own crit stars, and that's usually enough. I'm going to be extremely biased. My Quetz is like level 119 at the moment, I think. I have to double check on that, because I actually have to still keep on. She might be 109. She's either 109 or 119, and there's a giant discrepancy between the two, so forgive me on that one. But either way, uh, the way I use her typically as someone who is single target and in a lot of comps that usually have two enemies in it, is that I like to use her to take out one or both of them. And if you're able to just get a buttload of crit stars and then follow it up with another one on the side, you can usually take out both of them with like a decent buster chain and not have to use any support stuff. Again, it kind of depends on the event and stuff like that. But getting your, giving yourself 25 crit stars when you're a writer, that's just basically saying, I give me 25 crit stars and then it goes between these three. Mm, pretty nice buff, I would say. It, th she's already really good and maybe that's just me i forgot she's one of the very few units that gives a buster up to other people it's only 30 percent she's already pretty good as it stands right now like she's just usually mostly used for huge power plays and that's it 
Would I want her to be used for more? Yes, but that's because I'm biased. But to be honest, every time I use her, she's already completely destroying everything. This just kind of helps her destroy things easier, and I don't have to use a CE <laughs> to give her crit stars. Or a, um, a Spiriton dress, whichever one. So, nice. Thank you for the buff to Quetz. I'll gladly appreciate it. Kojiro! I'll look at Kojiro's buff, even though he's free. I'm not above it. Second. Third. Fade out. Remove on mental debuffs. Gain some crit stars. 15 crit stars. Fade out A+. Remove his own debuffs. Grant self on attack activated debuff for 3 turns. Inflict quick resistance down by 10% for 3 turns to enemies when attacking with the quick cards. Gain crit stars. And yeah, it's a cooldown of 4. 15 crit stars. And he gets the inflict quick. And he does have a but I think he's 3 quick. And then he is a... Yes, Noble Phantom is a quick. I like Kujiro. He's a very nice, free, single-target um, assassin if you need him. Maybe it's probably because a lot of my time back when the game first started, he was the hero of France. You really used him for a lot of those dragon enemies. He could solo a lot of them. So I've always liked Kujiro. So I like that they keep buffing him. I like that they actually buff the one-stars. It's very rare that you ever see people actively... Any gacha game actually buff like the free units <laughs> that are like one star that aren't supposed to be anything so it's kind of nice that they do it for him perfectly good buff literally everyone has gojiro it comes with your fago feel free to buff him up and give your boy make him just stronger next rama which is a buff to his noble phantasm which we can look down here uh yes so it deals damage to one enemy five hits you can kind of see what i'm talking about when it comes to the Moriarty NP is that this is, yeah, this is typically how units had their NP like. Deals damage to one enemy, deals extra damage to demonic enemies, and then his rank EX is deals damage to one enemy, reduces their buster resistance by 20% for three turns, and then reduces one demonic enemy's NP gauge by one, and deals extra damage to demonic enemies. Uh, just lets him deal more damage to demonic enemies. I don't use Rama very much, so I actually can't speak too much about Rama. Feel free to tell me. It looks like he kind of needs buffs in everywhere, but maybe that's just me looking and seeing like he has like the base buffs. Every time I see Charisma, I feel like no one deserves the OG Charisma. It's the saddest skill to see for the most part, I think. But yeah, I think this is perfectly fine if you're someone you're looking for someone who do who want you want to take down demons with. The only problem is is that his other kit kind of not the greatest, N not very good at all. <laughs> And I don't know, I'm not sure how many demonic lancer enemies you're fighting, for the most part. But if you're someone who's a big fan of Rama, feel free to tell me all about him. I will gladly uh, read up and see your thoughts on how you feel about him. Uh, and then finally, the last one, Vlad, aka the reason that Galatea was basically nullified. Buffed his noble phantasm. Uh, he, I for he had three buffs to his noble phantasm? <laughs> Well, this is what it was originally. Deals damage to one enemy, gain crit stars. And then they buffed it to C+, after interlude 1, to where he now deals damage to one enemy and then gains crit stars. <laughs> and then they buffed it a third time to now where he deals damage to one enemy, reduces their arts resistance by 20% for 3 turns, and gains crit stars. Which is really nice. He went from 600% to 900% to 1,200%. That's insanity <laughs> for a Berserker on Arts. Oh, I feel sad for Galatea. Yeah, this is good. 10 hits on an Arts. I, re I really like Vlad. I like him as a... It's funny because a lot of Berserk... Um, a lot of Berserkers, except for I want to say maybe two that are coming to my mind, which is Bla Vlad and Musashi are most of them are very bad when it comes to NP gain. That's why it's a pain in the ass to gain NP with Lancelot um, outside of turn one after using his one skill. Uh, because for the most part, their NP gain rate is terrible. But Vlad doesn't really suffer from that, and neither does Musashi. And like I said, except for turn two or three. <laughs> except for turn two, two, which is when you use the... Um, the classic Lancelot turn, which is turn one, uh, Kaleidoscope, use it, turn two, double Scotty into all his skills, and then he should have 100% NP. At least that's how I always did it when I was doing quick meta farming. <clears throat> Haven't been able to do that in a while. Um, 
But for the most part, Berserkers are very bad when it comes to that. So it's kind of nice to see that Vlad is a single target one that is very good at it. And unfortunately, it kind of invalidates a lot of what Galatea is trying to do. Because how do you compete with... A, let me see how... Let me look at Galatea real quick. Because I need to see... I forgot about how I didn't realize that this is the third, the second time they buffed his noble phantasm. That's just silly. Galatea. Yeah, nine hundred percent is respectable. The only problem is, is that nine hundred percent is just lower than <laughs> one thousand two hundred. You'd need a second NP copy to kind of rank with that, and then by that point, if he hits two, he kind of just out ends up outpacing her. Yeah, ten hits over nine. Deals damage to one enemy, reduces their NP gauge by one. Deals damage to enemy, reduces their arch resistance by 20%. He doesn't have it on his Noble Phantasm, but I know that he can also do the NP gauge stuff on his skills and stuff. Yeah, that's unfortunate for Galatea. I don't need to... If you're a big fan of Galatea, it's not me trying to make you feel bad. It's just me going, why would they release Vlad right after Galatea? It doesn't make much sense to me. <laughs> but yeah, that's his buff. It's a very good buff. Vlad's cool, especially for a free-to-play. Not a free-to-play, but he's a f always in the banner of five-star, which is nice. Now, let's come to the main point here, which is going to be very easy to sum up. Should you summon on these banners, you're saying to me, Wogi, I really want to summon on these, but Lost Belt 6 and Summer and all this other stuff are coming up. Should I summon? And my answer is, for the most part, no. You probably shouldn't. Now, if you're someone who's a big fan, who loves Vlad, who loves Rama... Who lo you can't, well, if you love Kojiro, just go summon on the free-to-play banner. Who loves Quetz? Who loves Yan? Who loves Moriarty? Who loves Lancer Alter over here? Then go ahead and do your thing, man. I'm not going to stop you. I'm not going to judge you. I'm not going to sit there and say, like, when you fail to get anyone else in a future banner, be like, ha, if only you had listened to me and not summoned at this exact time, you would just wouldn't have happened. That's not true. I think you should always summon for the characters you care about the most because this game is a game about characters first and then what they do second. <laughs> it's just usually typically nice that they do something good the second time. Uh, and by I mean that is that there's just so much story to Fago and the Fago story makes you care about them so much that it actively feels like different than like other gotchas where I'm like, oh yeah, I'm summoning for this in Dokkan for example. Plenty of people summoned for Kale on Japan who did not give a fuck about Kale because it's... She was really good. <laughs> and that's enough for them to go like, alright, let's go. And I'm not saying that that doesn't exist in Fago, but I think for the most part, a lot of people in Fago will gladly skip over a super powerful unit if it means that they have a chance, a better chance of getting the unit that they actually want. So for this part, I would say that for these units, two of these are, I think two of these are story locked. Lancer over here is story locked. She Quetz is obviously story locked. I wish she wasn't. I actually need to check to see if Yan is story locked. He is not story locked. Uh, Moriarty is, I think, limited. Not story locked. Just straight up limited. N yes, he is limited. I was waiting. I was like, where does it say? It just literally says right there he's limited. Vlad is not limited. Um, Rama is not limited. Yan is not limited. And obviously Kojiro is Kojiro. So, yeah, you can typically, for the most part, if you're someone who doesn't care a lot about these characters, it's an easy decision. You just skip and you continue saving for the kings you care about. But for someone who definitely cares about Quetz, you should obviously be summoning here because she is story locked and story lock units are a pain in the ass. Now, I will say there actually is a ticket coming up later where you could literally just pick up Quetz, which is what I keep reminding myself in the back of my head is that that's what I should do. But I have very bad willpower. So this is about a 50-50 chance that I just spend whatever SQ I have now to try and get another copy of Quetz with what I have. Ah, but don't be like me. Try and, again, use your logic. There's big stuff coming forward. We always know how how much time... A lot of the, like, for example, a lot of the four stars can eventually get picked up for a, with on a four-star ticket, which is coming up, I think... I have to look up when it's coming, but it is coming either within a year or so. I have to look up exactly when it's coming up. Now, obviously, probably some people want to save that for another limited stuff. So, again, use your brain. Try and figure it out. Look at your box. Look at your soul. Look at your heart. And then you will know what to summon on. But for the most part, if you're someone here looking for a cold heart robot answer, should I summon the answers now? And just keep waiting. 
But that's the end of the video, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out. Have a good night. And good luck to you if you summon. Bye.